I guess, right the car would have most likely blown up on the dyno right after, correct? Shortly after, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We legit just saved the 370 from going kaboom. Alright, 370 is back. What is up, guys? We're going to get to another episode of Danny Dawson. No, sheesh. Well, we're going to figure it out. Hey, Danny, don't worry. I know stuff. Eric, what's good, bro? But who is Eric? Eric is a 7 foot 6, 480 pound giant that drove all the way from Maine to make sure Britney is perfect. An absolute expert when it comes to turbos, engines, and just an absolute legend. Eric drove from Maine. That's that's like near Alaska or like somewhere yeah, in the yeah. it's somewhere in the, in the North Pole. I don't even know. No, that was a 28 hour drive with all the traffic and uh, 28 hour drive in his truck, which do you want to tell them about the truck? The same turbo. That's his car. See guys, I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying. So he drove with a huge trailer, 20 plus hours, and we're gonna finish the turbo build. In four days. In four days. And gallery gaskets. And that's that's what we're gonna do right now. We are going to do the gallery gaskets. Uh, let's go to the clip where I talk about them and show you guys the gallery gaskets from Z1 Motorsports. Yeah, so this is from Z1 Motorsports. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. If you guys want to go ahead and buy this yourself, uh, oh, we got a cool lanyard, bro. Oh, look, we got O rings. We got the, I guess you could say these are the better, better bolts. Better bolts. These. They're the same bolts, but they're hex instead of Phillips. Like this entry, too. <laughs> I need one of each. Really? Shout out to Z1 for giving me two. <laughs> Wait, it's only one? Yeah. Oh, well then. For the timing cover, I guess you could say. The VTC solenoid. VTC solenoid. We also got two. Yeah, oh shoot. And a bunch of O-rings. Yeah, yeah, we got O-rings. So right now we're going ahead and well Eric is draining the coolant. So he's gonna do the gallery gaskets without taking the nose off. Not pull the nose off. So he got a bunch of like snap-on tools. He came prepared, we're all prepared, and yeah. Not a good portion of my it, it was almost at the point where should I just load my toolbox up? <laughs> <laughs> we're getting this done. This car is gonna be making 700 horsepower to the rear wheels. So like by the end of the every week. time I talk to Eric, he just gives me a bigger number. <laughs> You need to relax, my good sir. Hey, hey, I've already done it once, so we're good. I know it's I know they're capable of doing it. We'll have a map for 700. Whenever I just don't care and I'm like upset, I'll just put it on. These are like the cam, no? Those are uh, cam sensors. Cam sensors, haha. <laughs> Those are your cam so. Oh, I know things, bro. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, hashtag mechanic hey, hey. in the comments right now. Hey, you're the Eric, one Eric doesn't know anything. I, I know my stuff. As many of you commented, I was I was unaware of how many miles this car had, which is, I mean, 88 isn't a lot, but it's getting close to the point where right. they're gonna start failing pretty soon. So it's like preventive maintenance. We don't want this car to blow up. We want it to make power, be able to enjoy the car. So the big killer of these is what happens is when the oil gets really hot, it gets very thin, especially out here in Florida. Yeah. And when you put a turbo on the mix and you're making double the power of the car that it normally makes, it gets the oil even hotter. And that's what's killer for these cars is hot oil. So you're saying that the gaskets isn't really the problem? The gaskets, well, because of the hot oil is part of the reason why they fail. Because they're made out of paper. They're right. literally made out of paper. Right. And you'll see when we get in there, there's these little Phillips screws that hold them on. And over time, they, they vibrate loose. loose. And then the gaskets blow out, your oil pressure goes away. There you go. That's why your Zs are blowing up. The paper gaskets are still just as good. But what Danny bought is he bought the upgraded screws. You bought the Allen screw screws. Oh, that I we're going to put Loctite on. So we never have to worry about them backing out. Yeah, stuff, all right? the tension comes yeah. off, the power steering, the alternator, all this front end stuff comes off. Once you get all the accessories out of the way. Yeah. It's actually yeah, because it's basically getting there. everything out of the way to get to yeah, this. You gotta get to all and then bolts. the bottom side. You gotta pull the oil pan off because there's bolts that go up. Really? From, yeah, you have to pull the oil pan off. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, to get. Um, oh, we already got to take it off, so we can. We have to take it off anyways. Yeah. Uh, to drill a hole for the oil return. For line. the return. Line. Now a lot of people question, uh, why don't you use a spacer? Well, you can use a spacer. We found though that using a spacer in the rear mount kit specifically is a bad idea because it sits so low in the pan that it can actually let oil drain backwards back into the turbo oh, okay. and it makes a mess it makes it very smoky when the car sits yeah so we found interesting drilling a hole in the oil pan higher up so the oil cannot feed backwards right through the oiling system we all, we do put a one-way valve on it but oil still leaks through it it's just it's very hard to get it to not flow through so So the first thing that we do is you have to pull off all your front accessories, servertine belt, power steering pump, the alternator, you have to pull to the side. AC compressor can stay where it is. A couple things you need to look out for when you're doing these two is right here is your oil temp and oil pressure sensor. You got to be careful with these or else they break. 
they snap right off and then you have to replace them. And that's not easy to do on these because it's very easy to crack the oil pan on. Where the sensor is, there's a very small sidewall and these are called NPT fittings. Thread is angled, so as you tighten them in further, it creates a better seal, but you can crack the oil pan right here and then your upper oil pan has to get replaced. I'm dripping in sweat and I'm not okay with it. <laughs> All right, Eric just got the uh, oil alternator's off. Alternator's off, power stream is off. Wait, can you grab that bolt? Look how, what even, what is, what? So what are all these bolts, like 12 mils or 14 mils? Uh, basically the entirety of this motor is made up of 12, 14, and 10. That's your power steering bracket. Sometimes the fun part is getting the crank bolt off. Crank bolt is a 19 millimeter. No, no, no. There we go. There you go. Pretty sure you got it. Yeah. 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 There you go. But I put a 19 mil socket on the on it. Then I shove a pry bar in between the little slits right here in the back. You'll oh, see, see when I take it yeah, off. You put it These are your cam phasers. These can change the angle of the cam separate from the crank. So you can increase spool time on turbos, oh, you make uh, more mid-range power because of it. There's a bunch of benefits to having it. But when you run on just a little bit low on oil, these fail. And then you'll get cam phaser codes and this and that and the car oh, in limp mode. You can also get destroyed from the gallery gaskets failing, so. These are the covers. And these are the screws that, over time, get loose and back out. There's a paper gasket in there that actually blows out. I'm looking in Danny's oil pan. That's a little bit of paper right there. A little piece. So they were getting ready to pop out. When I pull the timing chains off these, because I don't pull the valve covers, unless I have to, I set the motor at top dead center. I work on these motors and I'm doing uh, just gallery gaskets and not changing timing. I make sure to set the motor at top dead center. There's a couple different ways to know that you're set at a top dead center. When all the cams, the groove there and the groove there are pointed both at that angle on both sides. That tells you right there that the motor's at top dead along with. And there's a little line on the oil pump. When the keyway and the oil pump line right here lines up, that means that the motor is at top dead center. So this one hasn't failed, but this one did. So a lot of times what happens is they'll fail here, they'll fail there, down here, and on this one as well, they'll just be gasket surfaces missing. That's what causes your Nissan to blow up. When I was ill in bed, my friend took apart the gallery gaskets and turns out that mine were broken. And it was recent because we looked in the oil pan and there were chunks of it. You're, he already showed it, but there was little chunks in the oil pan. Dude, and literally if we had not found this problem this, right there, these are gallery gaskets right the there. car would have most likely blown up on the dyno right after, correct? Shortly after, yeah. Wow. It would have blown out more gallery gasket and it would have ended up losing oil pressure on the dyno and yeah. Ooh, shout out to Eric. No, actually, shout out to whoever commented because we were not going to do the gallery gas because then I'm like, Eric. I was thinking about it because I thought this was a later year. I didn't realize it was an 09. Right, you thought so, he had less miles. I was like, Eric, people keep commenting about an doing 09 the. with 88, I'm like, it's getting close. Come wow. Down. We legit just saved the 370 from going kaboom. This guy, he's driving 28 hours straight. Yeah, that's him. Here. So. We take over him really good. Uh, for people at home, like if you don't want to bring this to, to a mechanic to do, like honestly, it's not that long of a job. If your mechanic tells you he's charging you like $4,000, find a new mechanic. It's, Wait, that's how much you're charging me to do this. They don't need to know that. <laughs> I would honestly be scared to try to do this by myself. Like you could do it. I, I would have done it, but I would have been like, damn, this is like, so I'm pretty serious, I gotta be focused, I gotta make sure I don't mess up the timing, things like that. And like I explained in, when I was pulling it apart, when you want, when you set the timing to, to not do it wrong, you put the motor at TDC, or top dead center, which is where the number one cylinder is at the top of the stroke. Oh, okay. And you know that by all of these grooves facing that certain way, 
which is up at an angle, and you can actually line it up with the little groove right there. Oh, I see. They're all the same way, and yeah. these are just... You do that before you take your timing chain off, right? and everything stays where it is, so that way you just put the timing chain back up. So let's say someone just... They don't do that, and they're like, crap, where am I supposed... What, what's up with the timing? What do I do now? How um, would you fix that? If you mess up, and a cam turns, and something, and you're worried about it, you're going to have to pull your valve covers. I suggest... If you're a person who has doing this at home you should pull the valve covers anyways yeah just because because you do your timing cover at the same time you're resealing it right you should do all your gaskets yeah and you're doing your all your you just do all your gaskets at once so that way your motor doesn't leak at all so i've already done the valve cover gaskets that's why we don't have to go ahead and do that so have to use loctite but i recommend it because you don't want this coming apart again Timing on this motor, you have these timing tensioners. You have to push down on this pin and push in in this plunger to release the plunger all the way in. And then there's a little pin on the front that you can stick a paper clip or I'm using a pick in this case, but it doesn't matter either way. There's different colored markers. Now the OEMs, which is what this is, have two yellows and an orange. The two yellow timing marks are for the cam and the orange is for the crank. You put the guides on after, because you also never get it on otherwise. Now one thing I always do, is I know that I have the timing set properly, so I always push out on the tensioner. Make sure it clicks a couple times, so it's got as much tension on the chain as possible, so that when you start it for the first time, it can't possibly, it still could, but it's less of a chance of it jumping timing. Yeah, on this side we're doing a more experienced style of project. <laughs> So Eric had the brilliant idea that we should go ahead and paint this black. I mean, I think it'll be really cool right now. It'll give it a more meaner look from the front end. I'm gonna try to get a plaque with how much horsepower we make. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it like put in the front right of the engine. The Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do that, that'll be dope. Look, look, I'm helping, bro. Look. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Nice. This is why you always check your pickup tube because I actually found the remnants oh of your gosh. gallery gasket that broke off in the pickup and that could have caused an oil starvation issue also blowing up a motor. Dude, so did we see Brittany? Yep. Okay, so it's time. Time to drill into the, into the oil pan. You want to tell them why we're drilling into the oil pan? While we're drilling into the oil pan is why I, what I was saying earlier. Right. Yeah, for reasons so it doesn't cause oil to go back yeah. to the turbo and kill it. Because we don't want to do that. It'll kill the oil seals. On the top side of the oil pan, right? The top side of the oil pan, Because yep. I didn't notice, but 370s have a two-piece oil and pan, so correct? And so yep. And so did G's. Yeah, they have an upper oil pan and the lower oil pan. We're doing on the upper. We're doing on the upper. Okay. Dude, I actually don't want to turbo my car anymore.
right, so we're just gonna go ahead and knock another thing out, and that is an oil cooler. This car should be running. Wait, where's the bus? This is actually a pretty generic oil cooler from Amazon. It was like $110, not that bad at all. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and install it now. Eric said it's great though. Cheap, it's good. You know, no. Dang. Big reason for wanting oil co coolers on honestly any car, not yeah. just Nissan's, but any car that you plan on using in a performance oriented way, especially in a boosted application and with him living in Florida, oil temps can get very hot. What happens with the oil when it gets hot is it breaks down, especially if you have cheaper oil, it breaks down easier. Danny nearly cut himself with a knife. I almost died right behind the camera. But the oil will break down and turn in, it'll all the different parts of the oil mixture will break apart and it'll, when you drain your oil after like a track event, yeah. it'll be like water. It'll oh, be very wow. thin. Thin oil does not equal lubrication. Yeah. No lubrication means. We got some hoses. We got two long ones. So there's a pretty generic. This is, uh, a, this is a generic kit. It works on a couple different variations. It comes with different uh, bolts for the oil sandwich plate. Nice. And then here's your sandwich plate. Wait, so oh right, it goes is, to the... What happens is this goes, so the oil filter normally filter. mounts on, you take it right. off, this goes on, and then one of these threads into that, and then the oil filter will go Right, on. okay. And these are extra, we're actually gonna be using one of these for um, feeding the oil with turbo. Wow, feeding the oil with turbo. And now that cooler. Oh, that's a pretty cool size. Yep. Cooler. 16 roll, right? Uh, I believe it's 16 roll. Yep. Oh, did you get the Oh, no, the 16 roll. Yeah. 16 roll, yep. On the higher horsepower stuff and the guys that I know we're going to be using track use, right. I do a 32 row. Okay. Um, for if, something and they like say I want to upgrade to a 32, could I really literally just buy a 32 and then just mount it onto the same fittings and stuff? Yeah. But there's no reason. Right. You're going to notice your oil temps are way cooler all the time yeah. now. You can, it, you can move it later. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Uh, uh, you need to save paint it black. <laughs> we could. So I'm just like, I was asking him a question from the front of the car, and I hear tss, tss, when I look, he's actually painting it black. You're the one who recommended it. Today's your day, bro. This whole week, oh my, <laughs> you can cool in everywhere. Same time. Dude, I'm literally not gonna know if I'm cooling or not. I'm gonna have to like open the cap. I like it. That's nice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm a mechanic, bro. Galler gaskets in less than a day. Could have, like, finished way earlier, I could have too. finished at, like, noon, but we kind of took a break. Danny was sleeping. We went out and bought some stuff. Now, that's crazy. Galler gaskets is done. That you always want to do with oil stuff. I was alluding to earlier, this is called an NPT style fitting. That is a 4AN style fitting. You do not put Teflon tape on 4AN. A lot of people do that. They put it on the threads. No. AN fittings don't seal on the threads. They seal on this tapered edge. See the tapered end in there? There's a little, little taper end yeah. no, that it. this side feeds into and that's how it seals. So as you can tell, the clearance here is very tight. Very tight, my friend. The pipe does look good though, look at that shit. Too bad it won't ever be seen. For real. Look at that. With that being said, we're under the car. As you can see, there's some piping on. The series that's coming out after this video, it's absolutely insane. So be sure you guys watch every single episode. Leave a like, subscribe, and push the notification bell to know whenever the series drops. I'm super excited. Shout out to Eric for driving all the way down from Maine. Maine is a legend. He's behind the camera right now. Um, that's how you fix the galley gaskets. Thankfully, we literally saved the 370Z from blowing up, which is absolutely 
uh, insane. Funny thing is, usually people ignore YouTube comments. I actually enjoy reading the comments. And I actually take into consideration a lot of things you guys tell me. So I took into consideration the galley gaskets. He agreed. He did. He messaged me. He's like, hey, people are saying Geller gaskets. I thought the car was like a 2012 or something like that. I didn't know it was an 09. So yeah. And then we, so. we opened it up, or Eric opened it up. And as you can see... Sure enough. It was missing a big chunk. That wasn't the uh, what do you call it? the oil? Yeah, we fa I found the piece of paper in the pickup. In tube. the pickup tube, right? The pickup tube. So that could have been really bad. That could have been bad. So we saved Brittany from blowing up. Dino Day is literally a couple days away. We've been able to do all this in the matter of like three, four days. Absolutely insane. So stay ready for the series. This well, we're already doing the series. So smash that like, subscribe, and with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Hasta luego.